so good morning ladies and gentlemen hope you can hear me well my name is Fula uh I'm the Sasa system trainer and welcome you to our today's webinar where we are going to talk about uh RDP so for the benefit for the benefit of uh of following a foundation for those who are not aware that uh as per the government directive uh the government directed that all the ministries should be able to pay the uh uh payment fees uh, electronically hence as the state department of lands we came about with an avenue uh, called rdp which uh, we will be able to pay all the fees included in the state department of lands and physical planning uh, so it means that uh, henceforth you're not going to pay using cash you're going to pay using the platform rdp which is the module that you're going to see and appreciate if and features now. So also we encourage uh, for purposes of payment of stamp duty, we want to uh, encourage you to use the RDP pay uh, to for easy convenience of payment, as you'll be shown of how to, you can be able to also do the same uh, in terms of settlement of your of your invoices. And also for the purposes of payment across RDP, we also integrated with eCitizen, which is also a platform that we have a collaboration that uh, helps us and gives us the avenue for payment uh, across uh, the different uh, fees that you're supposed to pay at the pay uh, module. So the RDP module, for those maybe who might not have uh, public accounts or uh, citizen accounts, you can be able to create that through the RDSASA .lands.geo.ke give you the platform where you can be able to register and you can also be able to visit our YouTube in case you want to make a registration where we have the tutorials that will guide you of how you can be able to register an account so that by the time you register you can be able now to appreciate uh, and you can be able to make payments to the State Department of Lands using the RDP module which is uh, located uh, in the uh, RD Sasa. So uh, also uh, with me, I have my colleague, Sarah Masive, who will be able to take us through the different features of RDP. So I want to urge you to be keen enough and uh, we shall have the module first, we shall train the whole basis, then we shall be having an interaction section whereby we shall be able to take your questions and be able to address uh, the questions uh, effectively to welcome Sarah to take us through the RDP uh, module. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. And thank you so much for the introduction. I would like to take us to the RDP module. I believe we have seen it on our Adisa accounts. Yes, so we're going to do a demo on the payments that are being done. As has been explained, we have uh, changed the mode of collection as a, according to the presidential directive. So all the collections being received by the State Department are going through are going through the e-citizen collection account, which is already integrated uh, in our system. And all of us who've been transacting, you'll notice that uh, the details have been updated and you will now make the payments through RTP or through the, the RDSASA system. So I'm going to just take us through. And just before I get started, I would like to alert us that the RDP module largely uh, sorts the issues that we are facing for transactions across the country. So for those that are transacting within Nairobi, uh, your application on RDSASA will still generate an invoice, which you're going to proceed to make payments for uh, as part of the process. But in any other transaction that you're doing across the country, you will use the RDP for invoice generation. So for Nairobi transactions that are already incorporated in the system, you do not initiate a transfer and go uh, back to RDP for invoicing. The invoice is still going to be housed within your transaction, just like it's been. And the payment instructions are going to be displayed and you're going to be able to make a payment in this uh, through that uh, channel. So the RDP module, um, when you log in successfully, I'm not taking us through the login because uh, a lot of us are familiar with the system. So I'm not going to take us through the login. This is a, this is a homepage. So I'm going to an already logged in account. 
And this is the view that you get once you're logged in. And on the left side here, you can see a number of services and our focus for today is the RDP process. So I'm going to click on RDP and uh, the platform I'm using is a, is a testing platform. And some of the changes you're going to see here might not be on your, on your side, but the self-assessment uh, for stamp duty is going to be deployed. Um, I think maybe by close of business, so we'll be able to see how that works on our side as well. So when you click on RDP, you first get a view of two services. One is labeled as RDP services, and the other one is uh, staff duty self-assessment. So I'm going to start us off with the RDP service. Uh, once you click on RDP services, um, the first view you get is of uh, all the invoices that have been generated on this account, and they're categorized uh, as unpaid or paid invoices. So these are invoices that the logged in user has um, has generated using this account. And you're able to see that uh, we have invoices that are yet to be paid for, and uh, the ones that are paid, the history is maintained here, and you're able to see exactly the payments that were made. Um, so for you to create a new application, to generate a new invoice, you'll click on the new application tab. And just like the other services on Artisasa, you get uh, frequently asked questions that guide you on uh, any questions you might have concerning the RDP process. So after you've gone uh, through the frequently asked questions, you go to the next bit, which is county details. And uh, this also encompasses the payment details. So you're going to be asked for the county. And this is because, as I have mentioned, we are, we are receiving payments for the entire country. So you're going to select the county uh, that you're seeking services from. I'm going to use Mombasa for this um, illustration. So you select Mombasa County. Then uh, the next thing you're going to be asked for is the registry. So the system has mapped all the registries and all other stations that uh, offer services from the state department. So we have um, registries that offer registration services, and we also have other offices, other land offices, survey offices, and uh, maybe adjudication offices. So all of these are mapped, and you'll be able to see uh, all the stations and registries in this drop down. So for our case, I'm going to select the Mombasa registry. Then uh, the next thing you're going to be asked to input is the department. And this is the department from which you're seeking services from. Um, you're going to select. So here we have the six technical departments within our state department, from physical planning all the way to land adjudication and settlement. So you're going to select the department that offers the service you're seeking. So I'm going to use the land registration department, for example, and then you're going to be asked to select the process. So this is the process that you're seeking, um, the service you're seeking from this office. So I'm going to select a transfer. So just to explain is that this transfer fee that is covered here is the registration fee of 500 shillings. As we're all aware, the registration fees that have had been waived uh, have now been reinstated. So from this list of processes, uh, most of these are registration fees. So the transfer is the 500 shilling registration fee, transfer of charge is the 500 registration fee for that service. So these mostly are registration fees and for the stamp duty is paid uh, separately. Then the next thing you're going to be asked for is the parcel number. And uh, for this, I'm going to really emphasize that we have to be really keen and uh, when recording the parcel number. And this is because um, unlike Nairobi, the rest of the country's information data has not been digitized. So we are relying on you to capture the parcel number correctly so that we do not have confusion uh, where you uh, indicated parcel A while you intended to indicate parcel B because now that's going to be, to make it difficult to get the services for a parcel that you have not correctly quoted on the invoice. So I'm going to input um, a parcel. So I'm going to use Mombasa block one, parcel number one. So this parcel number again, you just input it as it's captured in the title so that there's no confusion. You capture it exactly as it is in the title. And um, the formatting is not strict like what you have for the SASA. So you just key in exactly what the parcel is named on the title. Then the last item you're going to be asked for is a payment item. 
And in this case, this is a transfer fee of 500 shillings, as I had explained. So I'm going to uh, create uh, select that. So this is the information you're going to be asked for. Uh, the next page is just a confirmation of uh, the data I have uh, input. If I see that there's a detail that I do not intend to capitalize is, I can go back in the form and make that update. So if I meant maybe uh, parcel number two, I can make that change and go back before I generate the invoice. So after I generate, then an invoice is going to be generated on the spot. So you can see that that application has been uh, generated, has been created successfully. And our invoice is now listed under the list of unpaid invoices as the first invoice. So these are going to be ordered in uh, order of the most recent comes first. So we can see our invoice here for Mombasa Block 1, Parcel 2, and uh, it's 550. So for every uh, transaction that we process through eCitizen, there's an additional 50 shilling service charge that is uh, charged onto that payment. So when you view the invoice, you're able to see exactly the data we had input, the recipient being the parcel number that you quoted. And we can see that this is a transfer fee of 500 shillings and a convenience fee of uh, 50 shillings. And you can see that all payments for this invoice are supposed to be made through the eCitizen platform, which we have integrated with, and I'm going to show how to make that payment. So this uh, invoice has a, a number of features. The county is exactly what I input and the registry, and we have uh, the recipient being a parcel number. And this invoice has an invoice number, which is a system generated identifier for this invoice. However, this is not going to be quoted when you're making this payment. So for you to now make the payment, as you can see, the payment instructions are not uh, attached on the invoice. So for you to make this payment, you need to click on pay. So when you click on pay, uh, at this point, we query, we get in touch with the eCitizen system and they are the ones that give us the payment instruction. So on the eCitizen platform, we have a number of uh, payment modes that have been integrated. We have the PESA flow, we have a debit, credit or prepaid card, and we have M-PESA. Uh, additionally, the, on the live system, you'll be able to see that we also have uh, KCB payment instructions RTGS instructions, uh, Airtel money, and cooperative bank payment instructions. So that in case you're making a payment that uh, cannot be handled on a PESA, you can use any of those other payment methods to, to make your payment. So once you click on pay, there's another unique identifier that you see here, which is a payment reference. Uh, the payment reference is generated by the eCitizen system, and that is what, uh, that is the, check that we use to see if this invoice has been paid for. So this payment reference is unique to each and every invoice, and you only get it after you click on pay on the system. So this is to say that uh, just because I am aware that the transfer is 500 shillings, I do not go directly and make that payment without making reference to this payment. So this has to be quoted in your payment. So when you click on M-Pesa, they're going to give instructions. We have. Uh, the SDK push, which allows you to input your phone number and complete a payment successfully. And we have the normal M-Pesa payment instructions. So the pay bill that is being used by eCitizen is a triple two, triple two. That is the pay bill that will be received in this payment. And for the account number, you will quote this payment reference. Uh, this is a six, uh, a six character long reference that is comprised of letters only that we do not have any confusion. So this is all letters, and that's what you're going to quote as the account number when you're making payment. Uh, so for our progression, I'm going to click on more payments, which will allow me to show how the payment looks like. So after I make the, that payment, our systems are going to communicate, and uh, the payment is going to be confirmed as received. And immediately, we see that invoice progressing from the list of unpaid invoices to the list of paid invoices, as you can see. Here is our invoice, and now it's been paid for. Uh, then again, when you click on view, in addition to the invoice, you can now also see a receipt. The receipt is only generated after the payment has been received and confirmed by both systems. So we can view this receipt, and uh, this is what it looks like. It still has all the information that was captured, and um, now it shows that this is a received payment.
uh, this receipt is also available for download. You can download it. And this is what you'll now present to the office. So in this case, this is what I will print as a customer and present to the Mombasa Land Registry. And uh, on their side, on the staff side, they will be able to confirm that this is a valid system payment and give you the services that you're seeking from that office. So um, most of these payments have already been mapped, especially payments that are standard in nature. Um, all the RDP, all the invoices that are covered by the RDP services are payments that are standard. In case a payment is not standard, for example, maybe you're doing a mutation, you would need to consult with the relevant surveyor so that they give you the correct charge, and then that is what will be invoiced. So they can also invoice you, especially for those payments that are not standard. Uh, we have received a lot of feedback concerning the RDP. So we are also incorporating additional features that you'll be able to see in the near future, maybe like paying for a bulk payment, maybe you're doing a number of searches at once, you'll be able to see that shortly. So I'm going to progress to the stamp duty self-assessment. Uh, and just before I do that, I think it's uh, important to show one of the services that we have seen to be commonly sought after, which is the payment for land control content. So I'm just going to show exactly where we find that. So under the department, uh, that's a service that's offered by the land administration department. And the, the process on the live platform, let me just switch. The process is covered as... Um, under land administration services. So let me just show that so that uh, we are clear on exactly where to find the process. So this is a live platform. This is what we'll be able to see. We have um, land administration services. So when I click on land administration services, this is where I will see the payment item. That's land control board fee. That is a fee of 1000 shillings. So that is how you invoice for land control consent. Uh, so uh, just as I was saying, we can now progress and look at the stamp duty self-assessment. So stamp duty self-assessment is made to work very similar to what we have been doing with the ITAC system from Kerry. And basically what this means is you will present your documents for assessment to the registry that is giving you the services. And after the assessment has been done, then you can come back to the system to generate an invoice for the same. So when you log in, you'll go to self uh, stamp duty self-assessment. And again, you will see a list of paid and paid invoices. And then you can proceed to create a new application. So for this uh, stamp duty self-assessment, you'll be asked for slightly more details than what we had for other processes. So you're going to start with the county. I'm still going to use Mombasa. Then the process. So these are the different processes that attract a payment for stamp duty. So they are all listed. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use a transfer because I believe that is one of the most common processes for stamp duty payment. Then I'll select the Mombasa registry. Then I'm going to be asked for the parcel number. So I'm going to use the same parcel, Mombasa block one. Parcel number two. Then I'm going to now input the assessed stamp duty amount. So this is the not the consideration amount, not the valuation amount, but the final amount you're supposed to pay in terms of stamp duty. So in my case, I have my documents assessed and I'm supposed to pay 125,000 in stamp duty. Then you're going to be asked for the area uh, of the person that you're working on. So I'm going to capture the area and the units. So we have the different units that are covered for this. So I'm going to use 0.98 hectares. Then uh, you're going to be asked for the transfer row and transfer details. So the transfer row details, uh, we have the option of a user that is registered on the system and a user that is not registered on the system. So again, one of the feedback we got when we were going around is that uh, maybe not all parties might be willing to be to register for payment of stamp duty, especially after you have already executed your documents. And uh, for that, we created the, the option of having a user that is not registered. So for the user that is not registered, you're going to be asked for the identification type, where you can key in the user, uh, uh, the national ID, passport number, 
or alien identifier. And for a company, you'll be asked for the company registration number. Then you're going to key in that number. So if it's the ID number, you're going to key in the ID number. Um, an additional field we'll have here is a field for the KRA pin. So you're going to now be allowed to key in the KRA pin when the user is not registered. <coughs> but for a registered user, it means that we have these details on Adisasa. So you'll be able to just add the user by their Adisasa ID, as we have been doing for transactions within Nairobi. So I'm going to use a registered user. And when you search, the system is going to populate exactly the details of this user as are captured on the system. So you can see their name, the carry pin, and their ID number is related. This is not the user, you can always remove and add the correct user. And the same will go for the transferring. So for the transferring, I'm also going to use a registered user where I will uh, add them by their access ID and you're able to see that they're also added. So this is a transferring and these are their details. If I have any additional details, I can add them, but that is not a required field. And I can go to the next page where I'll be asked for the assessment slip. This is just the document that was assessed that shows that this 125 shillings is the amount that was assessed at the registry. So this can be a scan of, the, of your documents or an assessment slip that you will have. So I'm going to select that. And um, we, we might not need many documents for this, but in case you have any other documents, you can type in the document name and attach the document. The final page will be verification, where you're able to see uh, the details of the application you have created. And if in line, you can click on submit so that you can generate your invoice. So after that application is created, just like before, we'll see it listed under the unpaid invoices. Uh, when we view the invoice, we're able to see that this is a stamp duty fee for this person, 125 shillings, and the convenience fee of 50 shillings will automatically be included by the system. Then in order to pay, it's the same payment uh, as before. You click on pay, and the system is going to give you the payment instructions, and you can proceed to make that payment. After you make the payment, especially on MSI, you will have a confirm button on the system, which will now check, uh, will query the systems and you'll be able to, and will be able to, to confirm that the payment has been received. So after you make the payment, again, the invoice will receive, will move to the list of paid invoices. We can see our invoice here. We can now be able to view both the invoice and the receipt. So for receipt, here it is. This is what I'm able to download and print and present to Mombasa registry for the registration of my transfer uh, document. So that is the self-assessment module. So I'm going to pause so that you can receive the see we have a raised hand and some questions on the chat. Well, the we can handle that. Hello, uh, can kindly you ask if, if uh, I'm not speaking kindly. Okay, thank you so much, Sarah, for that uh, presentation. So at this time, I'm seeing a raised hand from James. Uh, so you can just uh, speak up so that you can be able to address uh, the issues that you have. James, kindly. Oh, th thank you, Sarah, for the good presentation. I hope I'm audible. Yeah, you're audible. Yeah, now I I'm just thinking a clarification on the connection between Adipay and the payment instructions that come whenever you are doing um, an app application concerning a converted title or, or an enumerated title because whatever application you submit immediately on the invoice tab you get uh the payment instructions whether it is the registration fee the search fee whatever the case even for these applications that require stamp duty once the application proceeds to that uh, milestone the same applies you 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 get the invoice and once you click pay automatically that uh, tab with the payment options and the instructions come. So I'm just trying to understand, is RBP for uh, applications concerning properties that are out of Nairobi or how does it, how is it relevant to Nairobi properties or, or enumerated titles or converted titles? That is the disconnect that uh, requires clarification. Thank you. So thank you, James, for your question. Uh, as I had mentioned when I was starting out, is that RDP will majorly allow us to make payments for parcels that are not transacting on RDSASA. 
So for your already enumerated property or any other property that you're transacting end to end on the system, you will not use RDP to make a payment. So if you're doing a search for an Nairobi parcel, you will not use RDP. So when you do your search on the system, the system is going to invoice you. The 50 shillings convenience is automatically added. So you make that payment within your application on RDSASA. So RDP comes in for transactions that you're doing across the country or maybe transactions that you might be doing uh, that are not on RDSASA. But for okay. the process you're doing within RDSASA, so a transfer that you drafted online, the payment will be on your transaction. So you're not doing a parallel payment. Okay, thank you. Let's have Angela and David simultaneously. Hi, good morning. So I have uh, two questions regarding the RDP system. One of them is, um, so does that mean that this new RDP system, especially for properties that are outside Nairobi, when you're making payment for stamp duty, that it renders the ITAX system obsolete? That's question number one. Question number two is, whose account should you use when you're paying stamp duty on, on the system? Um, for example, like in when you when we're using the ITAC system, we would have to log into the buyer's account, generate the PRN, uh, make the payments, then proceed. So for RDP, whose account do we use to make the payments for stamp duty specifically? Um, also keeping in mind that most people, especially um, people who have properties outside of Nairobi, are not have not um, registered on on RDSASA. Thank you. David. I thank you. Uh, my question concerns uh, green card applications. So there seems to be a bit of a discrepancy. On some accounts, uh, uh, individuals are able to access that option to uh, make a green card application. And on other accounts, uh, that option is not uh, listed among the drop down options. So perhaps how does one go about now making a green card application via the RPP system when it is not listed as an option on the drop down? Uh, that's my question. Let's take uh, two more. That is Miss Kilote. Hello. I don't know. I hope I'm audible. Yeah, you're audible. My questions are two. So number one, I think several of, of us have asked this question. Usually for stand duty, we pay, we generate the PRN on ITAP and then we pay. So does this mean using RVP now you we won't need to generate the stand duty payment slip on ITAP? That's number one. Number two, if Nairobi, if Nairobi transactions in Nairobi are not, you you're not supposed to use RDP, then why are that trans when you look at RDP applications, Nairobi County, and there are processes in Nairobi County that you can pay for on RDP? Why is that if Nairobi, if you just said <laughs> the RDP is not for Nairobi transactions, so why is Nairobi County and transactions in Nairobi County part of the processes in RDP? That's my number two. Okay, let's respond to those, then we can get uh, another lot. Okay, so I'm going to begin with the last question on the reason that we still have Nairobi on the list of counties. And uh, the reason we still have Nairobi is because, one, uh, Nairobi is the headquarters of uh, the State Department. And in as much as this is a service for the rest of the country, there are services that are still unique to Nairobi. So maybe you might be buying a map for Kitale, that is within Nairobi at Savio of Kenya or any other service that whose records are still housed in Nairobi. So for those transactions, we're not saying you're locked out. You still are able to get your service and you will select this, uh, the office that serves you, in which case that will be either the Nairobi registry, the central registry, or the survey office. They're all added. So that's just to allow you to get services uh, regardless of where you're getting the services from. Then um, the question on ITAX. So um, Kerea is mandated, has the ability to appoint another authority or another institution to collect stamp duty also, which is what has been done with the State Department. So uh, right now, if you're making this stamp duty payment through RTP, you do not need a PRN. You just make the payment directly on RTP. If you uh, if you go to this RDP, the, the reason that we would prefer that you make this payment here is that all our officers have been trained and have the direct capability to confirm that this payment has been received for stamp duty directly on a system that's housed within our state department. So that makes it 
uh, easier for you to get your services at a, at a one-stop shop so that you don't go to ministry for assessment, uh, go to career for payment, then come back for services to the ministry. So this is just a one-stop shop where you can get your service and your invoicing and the confirmation being done within the same within the same office. Then um, I don't know what the other question. The green card application, maybe I think some will will take that. And any other question that I might have left out. So uh, yes, uh, the issue of ITAC has been addressed, uh, and also the PRN uh, for the green card. Green card process payment. Uh, the person who asked, I believe you are saying that it appears on some accounts and it doesn't appear on others. I guess that was. The... But if you try to do it with one of our people, there's no difference. There's no discrepancy for the cyber guys to have maybe an added advantage. So I guess you can just flip and check as we continue the meeting and tell me if uh, you can see it. Because they don't have an upper hand in their account creation that they can be able to view services that you cannot be able to view. We are using one public account. Unless if it's not available, then we will make a provision uh, for the others tab, maybe so that we can be able to factor in that. In that case that we might not have, we shall be able to make an avenue where you can be able to sort you out and uh, the rest of the Kenyan studies. Momentarily. If you could just indulge me momentarily. Pardon? Uh, yes, okay. if you could just indulge me momentarily. Could you just share your screen and I see how you're going about making that application from Athipe. If, if, if members could just indulge me so that I'm able to see and then uh, uh, so, so, so that I see if there's anything you're doing different that I'm not doing on my end kindly. Okay, I've checked currently. I've found Kweli Haiko. So that's why I'm saying you're going to make a provision for that uh, implementation. Oh, sour, 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 sour. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. So I'll take the next uh, lot of questions. That is LMW, Sheila, and Alphonse in that order. Um, Sami, if I may just interject, because I don't think one of my yes. questions was answered. I had asked two questions. Yes. Um, whether this system is uh, basically makes the ITAC system obsolete and from what you have said is you can use either or. Is that the the position that you can either use ITAC system to pay stamp duty or the RDP system? Both of them are acceptable. Is that the position? Uh, yes, the ITAC system has not uh, disabled the stamp duty payment option, but RDP is preferred. Okay, then um, my second question, which uh, was not addressed, is when if you're using RDP to pay stamp duty, whose account should you use? Is it, you know, the individual's or the lawyer's account? Or, you know, whose, whose account should you use to make, to generate the invoice for payment of stamp duty and make the payment? Noting that not many people, especially outside Nairobi, have accounts on RD Sasa. Thank you. Uh, so either any account can do the generation as long as you capture the details right. But it would be preferred if these users are registered so that you can add them using their RD Sasa IDs. And the reason for that is just like RD Sasa, they will be able to see the invoices on their end. So every everyone that is added by their at the ID will be able to log in and see that this is the payment that was raised. But we have still made a provision for users that are not registered, but we would highly um, recommend. We recommend that the users are registered because the registration process is very straightforward. But in case you encounter a situation where they are not registered, you can use your account and mark them as unregistered users and capture their details. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You can go on with the next set, that is LMW, Sheila and Alphonse, kindly. Um, so my question is with regards to, so there's a transaction that we previously done where we required to make payments on RTP. Um, it seems that once you make payments, you need to then proceed to forward the receipts to the land registry for reconciliation purposes. Um, so this has proved to be somewhat of a challenge because one, um, I feel like it's a bit uh, inconvenient that it takes because it takes some time. So be uh, just giving you a live example, there were some payments which were made uh, early last week and to date have yet to be reconciled because we are told that uh, they can't be seen on the system from the registry side. Is this something that's being addressed? Um, um, and should these payments just be automatic? Once you've made a payment, you can use that receipt that you get to lodge documents because it seems we're getting um, different information. 
Okay, which county is that? Uh, this is for Nairobi Central Registry. Okay, noted. I shall address it. Okay, okay. Still, still, still on that registration, this is Alphonse. Still on that registration, there are instances where, whereby once you have generated the receipt, you are again uh, impelled uh, by, by the district uh, registry for a manual, a manual uh, receipt. Why can't we just uh, use the generated receipt to register the document instead of getting another manual receipt? Because it is slow, slowing down the, the, the process. Thank you, Alphonse. Sheila? Good morning. Uh, my question was on, on some transactions that we have for Pika and Riru. It's a transfer and a charge. So uh, we were trying to pay some duty on the other pay, but I don't think that function is available. So I just wanted to confirm, and I think that has been answered, but you can just let me know if uh, we can proceed to make payments through the, you know, the traditional usual ITAX and pay to carry and then proceed with registration in the meantime. Because I, I, I raised the question on the customer service people, and they told me that I should visit the um, the registrar to raise the invoice for me. Yeah, and I didn't think I didn't see how that is practical. So just needed that mm -hmm. clarification before we can uh, we can proceed. That, that's it. That's all. Okay. Uh, we can we can still slot more. Let's have uh, Donald and uh, Sharon and Kilote kindly. Can I be heard? Yeah, clearly. Uh, my name is Rono. Uh, I want to uh, thank Sarah. She was very good in her presentation. But I just want to make uh, some questions and follow-ups. We can't pay for the transmission succession documents. When you go to the land registries, we are, we are told to pay, pay it as a transfer three times. So that's an issue you should look at. Opening of a green card after a gazettement. There is no provision of that in the RDPay. The construction of a registry under the indemnity, there is no provision of that under the RDPay. Uh, there is no provision of a CTC, green card. There is also no provision of what? Those were the issues that I had. And I'm also thankful for the stamp duty self-assessment. I see it as very efficient because we, are, we, are, we had challenges where we were told that um, the the purchaser and the, the 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 seller would have to input their details and some of us had an issue uh, getting even those people so i'm very thankful for that self-assessment so those are my questions thank you hello everyone so um i'm talking from uh, we started using the other pay uh, outside Nairobi, and it has been a bit of a challenge because some provisions like Ronald has said are not there. Then we have another question. For those of us outside Nairobi, uh, most of the people who own land, as we, I mean, like their county, uh, they they are not tech savvy, they are not understanding the system, and you have to you have to operate on their behalf. Am I supposed to use my private account, or is there... Is there a way we can get professional account? That's my question. My questions are two. Um, on the module for Adipay, there is no replacement of title in Kiambu. So you cannot make payment for replacement of a title in Kiambu, of a lost title. So there's an ongoing transaction that we cannot do because of that. Then how come instruments are not sunk when you're using artificial transactions? What's the rationale? Because you place, you place some different documents um, on transactions on Africa, but the documents are not sunk. When they come back, the transfer has just been signed. What's the. Ms. Kilote, kindly Rudia the last question. I will not get any clearly. I'm saying um, transactions on Africa are like a transfer or a charge. Once these instruments are registered and you have you have followed the entire process and even payment of some duty, when we retrieve these documents, we have not the rational of these instruments not getting franked. Why is that? Okay, so let's uh, now respond on the set of questions. Uh, someone asked concerning the issue of. Uh, I believe it 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 had already been answered concerning the stamp duty settlement, and as Sarah mentioned, that is a feature that is uh, to go live in a few, so that will sort out uh, uh, the 
uh, stamp duty generation invoice and also uh, for the payments. And also what was advised is that uh, the, the, the first, the first uh, rollout that was done, it was the registrars were the only ones who were able to do the, that is to raise a stamp duty invoice. Hence, the information that you're given is correct. Once you can, you could get to a registrar that you could be able to be, your invoice could be able to be raised and you could be able to sort uh, the same. Concerning the private account, someone has asked, uh, uh, was it, was asking concerning uh, whether the private account should uh, be given a higher definition in terms of launching some processes. I believe uh, the main goal of this RDP uh, module is to basically allow uh, citizens to be to be able to launch the diff to handle the different uh, invoices generation and transactions uh, in a seamless manner so that means that as we get your feedback you're also incorporating the different things as Mr Alphonse had said regarding the reconstruction of the registry and all that so as we're handling this it means we are also inputting the the, we are also inputting whatever your inputs are to ensure that you will have a smooth experience uh, concerning the same. So I believe the snap duty uh, issue is rested. So uh, let me hand over to Sarah to deal with the receipts. Uh, so there was a question about um, the issuance of a manual receipt. The position about the manual receipts, which as we know comes from Treasury, is that we are doing... Um, a simultaneous, like we are still in transition from the manual receipts to the system receipts. So right now, in the meantime, you will still be issued with a manual receipt, but it should not uh, hinder you from proceeding with your transactions because the registrars have a view of all the payments that have been done within their station and every other officer that has a created account will be able to see and confirm and issue you your receipt as you get the services. Uh, so that is a... Um, it's a transitional measure. So this time we are going to phase out the need for the manual receipt. Then um, we have a question about the receipts that officers say they cannot see on their end. And I think that is a problem that I would say is very unique to Nairobi. And one of the reasons for that is that maybe during uh, invoice creation, we generate an invoice and map it to a specific uh, registry. So maybe indicate central, while indeed the officer of the service is from Nairobi registry. So that means that the officer that's giving me the services will not be able to view the receipts if they're not from their station. But uh, we have had that feedback for Nairobi especially, and we are working so that every all the invoices within Nairobi are visible to all officers within Nairobi, despite their registry, so that we do not have an issue where, because a lot of users just go and select Nairobi even if the service they're seeking is from Survey of Kenya. So for that, we are working on having all the invoices visible to all officers, and uh, that will be available shortly. Then um, we have we are aware that there's a number of processes for services that are not marked on RTP, and uh, we are working on uh, improving that list. But also, we are working on a functionality that will allow you to type in any other payment that might not be on the list. So you have the ability to indicate, for example, that this, this is a payment for a CTC green card, and you will uh, make that payment. But uh, for all this, uh, the reconstruction, the green card payment, placement of lost titles, and the individual list of transfers, those are being improved because they're standard and we, we have the list of applications. So we are going to continue uh, populating that list. But also at the same time, we are going to have others so that in case there's any other transaction that is not covered, it will, you will be able to define that under that payment item. Um, the only uh, point that I'd like to emphasize when we have the functionality for others is that we can now not undercut the system by because that will also allow you to input the amount. So that would mean you have to be sure so that you're not making an underpayment or overpayment for service. And if it involves the, in, the intervention of an officer in terms of how, the costing, you can have the correct charge so that you do not have a repeat invoicing process for that. Then um, there's a question about ranking of documents on the SASA. Uh, the documents that are 
uh, generated from at the SASA are uh, franked electronically as was allowed by the Business Amendment Act. So there's a QR code on the face of the transfer document that has the franking information. When you scan that QR code, you can see uh, all the details about how much duty was paid, when it was paid, how much was assessed. So I don't know if you have a case where that didn't happen, but the ITSASA documents are being franked electronically. Okay, let us let us take Wanjiru as you also look on the chat. Now we can address uh, the questions that have been raised. Wanjiru, kindly go forth. Wanjiru, are you there? So I'm proceeding to the chat so that we can be able to see and address the questions. Yes, someone? Yes, uh, sorry. Uh, my name is Wanjiru, but I'm not sure it's the same Wanjiru you are calling out. Okay, go ahead. But my question is on registration of uh, the survey documents, especially for the Nairobi 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 block. I would like to know just uh, uh, to have an overview of how that is being done because we have been having issues with surveyors saying they don't know how to go about it. Uh, so I think just to seek clarification, what do you mean by registration of uh, survey documents? The, the 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 plans, you know, when they do the subdivision, mm -hmm. now the whole process of uh, registering that survey on the system. Okay, so for Nairobi, the, after you, sorry. Yeah, I finished. Go ahead, please. Yeah, so for uh, survey works done within Nairobi, after you have the survey approved, I don't know if you're doing your survey on the system or manually. But this, the surveys in Nairobi should be done on the system. And after you're done, you get your authentication slip and uh, you proceed to land administration department, uh, which will allow you to initiate a lease processing application. So that will go to land administration. Uh, they are going to prepare a new lease. It's going to be forwarded to evaluation for rent determination. And then it will uh, finally go to registration for the final registration additions of the new title. So the system uh, allows for that process and uh, land administration services, we have the lease preparation, which allows you to do a lease preparation following any of this development control or any of these applications that have been done at survey level. I hope you answered, Jacqueline. Yes, uh, I, 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 I get it. So my, my, my follow-up question would be, uh, are all Nairobi block titles leaseholds? No, they're not. Because in my case, in my case, it's a freehold, and 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 uh, the surveyor keeps on saying he has issues lodging the documents on the system. So I was wondering. So that's why I wanted to to get an overview of the whole process, so that now I'm also able to direct him what to do. Uh, so the process is still similar. You're going to make the lease preparation application, and the land administration department, on saying that the parcel is freehold, will um, skip valuation and uh, proceed to create, like uh, we call it a lease for freehold, which is the document you get from Land Admin and it will proceed to titling. So there shouldn't be a challenge, but uh, we have done a webinar on this and we also have uh, tutorials online, but if there are any further questions, we can follow up after this meeting. Thank you. Sheila, do you, do you have another question? Sami, can you hear me? Yes, Anjir. No, I, I, I really I want to seek uh, some clarification in regards to stamp duty, despite you saying that we have closed that chapter. Uh, my question is, you see, when we lodge uh, an application for transfer of land under LRA 33, we usually lodge the application and then follow up on valuation. And that's when they post the stamp duty amount that we are supposed to um to the stamp duty amount that is required, uh, we are supposed to pay for it. So now my question is, is that still the process or now for valuation, for us to be able to get the amount for stamp duty, we need to come and load that application under RTP. Uh, for your case, that that, that means that uh, you've already launched it through the RTC platform, right? Once for transfer, know? yes. So that means- For transfer of land under, transfer yeah. under LR33, yeah. So if you have launched it, I believe the process uh, for Nairobi still goes through the channels. So you don't have a okay. to raise an invoice uh, for the same because the invoice will have already been populated. So it means you'll just settle that payment. But for other no. parties, they, you have to raise because they are still on the manual bit of uh, transaction. So meaning then we will need to follow the ITAX procedure to make the payment. 
uh for that uh, that's why we have said we have an avenue on rdp where we can be able to settle that okay, so it means okay. it will still appear the same you'll still have the payment options as you've seen on the rdp uh, module under that okay. case yes okay thank you Sheila, or any other person who has a question, you can just please go on and ask. Uh, mine was just a follow-up on stamp duty still. Eh? You said that the module will go live in due time, but in the meantime, since my documents are ready, can I just pay through ITAX? Yeah, that's that's my follow-up question. Okay. Uh, noted. Any other question so that you can address them wholesomely? So the module for self-assessment of stamp duty is, go is supposed to go live today. So by, I think by close of business, we should be able to do that, that payment on the system. So I hope uh, that assists because it's not, it's not in due time next week. It's, it's supposed to go live within the course of this day. So I think uh, if we exercise a little bit of patience, we should be able to make the payment successfully. So I'm, I'm seeing a question from Benedict on the chat. Uh, what happens to those who have already generated PRN? Also, you have already generated, you can still complete that payment, but if you have not, you can just start the process of fashion and processing. I, I don't know if there's any question from the chat that has not been addressed. If so, maybe you can just unmute so that you can just ask your question because we, from our side, we, we think most of the questions have been addressed. So if there's anything that was not uh, clear, you can just unmute and ask. Hi, hi. hi Sheila. My name is Maureen. Eh? Now I have yeah. a question. You're saying if you've generated the e-sleep, you can proceed, yeah? Unfortunately, I currently have a challenge with the Nanuki registry. They have declined the e-sleep and they're insisting on the RDP, which has a limit of 250 shillings. And I have a high amount of stamp duty to charge to pay. Uh, kindly guide on the same because they have said they are not receiving anything of their BAP because there is a strict directive that they should only accept RVP payments. Anything else? Nope. And it's a stalemate. We can't proceed with any charge registration in that registry. Uh, so I think it is. It's not the. It's not accurate to say that we have not accommodated payments that are. Um, more than the MPESA limit, because as I'd mentioned, on the payment channels available, I'm just logging into my my live account so that you can see that. And you're able to see that we have KCB payment instructions, you have RTGS payment instructions, Cooperative Bank, and Airtel Money. So in case you're working with an amount that is above the MPESA limit, these options are available for you on the live platform. So you can use this to make a payment. Uh, I, I think you got me wrong. Huh? What I meant yeah. is, the stamp duty invoice that is being raised there is for 250 shillings. Okay. When we go to stamp duty on the RVP, it brings the option of 250 shillings. Nothing above that. The issue is not the limit, it's the amount. So like right now, I was we are working on how to generate 23 invoices of 250 shillings because that is the limit. So the Unless the stamp same duty amount that is available. Is a for nominal stamp duty when yes. uh, you're working on a transaction that attracts nominal stamp duty. For other stamp duty amounts for registration of transfers and charges, you're supposed yeah. to do the self assessment, which you're saying has not yet gone live, but will be by close of business. So this will allow invoicing mm -hmm. for a, a, a larger amount because uh, a larger as amount. I had shown, yeah, as I had shown uh, on this application you're able yeah. to indicate the assessed amount. So if it's uh, 150, okay. it's, yes, under self-assessment. So um, my question is, Sheila, I, uh, I seek your guidance. Will I have to pay stamp duty twice because they are not accepting the e-slip? They're insisting on RDP because that will be twice. That is money going to government twice for the same so transaction. So you have already made a payment? Yes. Uh, you said Nanyuki? Yes. Okay, so maybe we can, we can, yeah, we can have a sidebar on that so that we can confirm the status and and try and resolve that because uh, 
it's clear in the stamp duty act that you're not supposed to be charged to duty twice so if you've already made a payment your application should be registered okay jen jen yes I, yes can you hear me yeah clearly oh okay i'm asking um uh, i have a discharge of charge that we launch it successfully but on the issue of payment whenever we make payment i'm always told that uh, the the i say again later, the person I'm supposed to the money is not there. It has been pending for months now. I have not been able to pay that. I don't know if it's transfer fee or something. How can I go about it? Discharge but fee. You've launched a discharge? We launched it. Yeah, yeah, I launched it. Uh-huh. It was all Which signed. Uh, uh, it's supposed to be central. Central. Uh, okay. Now the challenge I have is paying the the amount, the, the 550 discharge fee. I also have a land rent that I was trying to pay. I was also told the person to receive the money. I don't know. I try again later. On the land rent, did you pay it through Ardisasa? I want to make payment through Ardisasa. Yes. I went on through the process, but so, uh, on on uh, putting the pin and sending the payments, the message came back that, uh, let me just read the message to you. Transaction failed. M-Pesa cannot complete payment of this amount to each citizen. The organization system receiving the payment during some time. So I received. Okay, noted. Evelyn, we shall address uh, all of them at once. Uh, hi, Sammy and Sarah. Okay. Thank you for the presentation. Okay. Mine is just maybe a clarification. Okay. Maybe okay. I have, mine is only a clarification. Maybe I have missed this. There are some applications that are missing on the uh, the pay portal, such as registration of court orders, um, making payments for deed of rectifications. How how are you going to address that? Okay. One last question. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to address the question that Jen is asking about uh, you making a payment and not going through successfully. The the payment. The payments for RDP and RDSASA are being supported by eCitizen. And if you get that message that the organization is unavailable, mm -hmm. may, maybe it could be because there's a downtime on their side. Mm -hmm. But in our experience, when you give it a bit of time and try again, it should go through. Okay, excuse me. Yes, excuse Jen? me. I have one that is impending for two months now. I'm still not able to pay, so I can't submit the application. Uh, when is the last time you try to make a payment? Yesterday in the evening, today in the morning. Okay, so maybe we can, uh, just after the meeting, we can we try and see if there's a unique problem. Yes? I just said chat there, those guys. Eh? Okay, this is yeah, just talk to us after we, we conclude this so that we can look into the matter. We can have a video call and see if there's a unique scenario that you're encountering. Okay, how will, I, will I be able to reach you? We will uh, still be in this meeting after we have finished the RDP presentation. Oh, okay, 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 noted. Thank you. All right. Then Evelyn uh, asked a question about uh, leasing transactions. We had mentioned that not all the transactions, not all the processes have been covered on RDP, and we are still uh, populating that list. And we are also working on a functionality that will allow any other payments that are not covered on the list so that you'll be able to describe your the, the process and the payment item and uh, make that payment. So for the processes that are missing, we have, we have a list of all those processes and they're being added. So we are going to be having them in the in a field. So in the interim, how do we make the payments? Because the registry is not accepting the payments. Uh, in, the, in the meantime, anyone who has a payment that is not marked on the system, the staff, of uh, the state department across the country are able to invoice you for any payment that is not marked on the RTP services. So they are able to create an invoice for that. So I don't know which uh, registry or which office you're working with, but we can uh, lie us with them so that you'll be able to get your invoice. Um, okay, this is noted. I will inform our representative to go and get the invoice from the registry. Okay. Uh, I can see on the chat we have Lillian who was who is saying she paid for such until now the invoices are been paid. Kindly share the uh on the chat share the invoice number so that we can be able to address that. I see another question from Kelvin Mugambi on the chat. Yes, you have to have your documents assessed before you do the process on the system. So the the assessment is not being done online. So you still present your documents, have them assessed. And uh, we now generate an invoice based on the already assessed amount. Thank you, Lillian, for your invoice reference. You're going to look into it. Uh, there's a question from Sandra that is not very really clear, that the invoice indicates stamp duty payment to be made on a citizen. Should we check RDP before making payment? I'm not sure I get your question right, but RDP 
direct your payments to eCitizen. So when you generate your uh, in, your invoice on RPP, the payment channel that will be used is the eCitizen channel. So I think if we have no other questions, Sammy. Okay. So if we have no further questions, I wish I that wish we that should uh, uh, end our, our session, session here. I want to appreciate all of you for someone on the chat. So we have one question. Let us just address it. The assessment has been stuck for some time now. So SDE, kindly share your reference on that application, then we shall be able to address the matter accordingly. So I want to thank each and every one of you for, for finding time and creating time to be in this session. I hope it has been impactful. Uh, SDE, just share your reference on the chat. I hope it has been impactful so that you can be able to transact on this platform. As you can see, it's a simple, uh, well-elaborated platform. So uh, we note all your considerations and all your input, and we shall be able to uh, have them uh, in place to ensure that you have uh, the best experience within the payment module. Uh, other than that, I want to wish you guys a very lovely day ahead. Uh, enjoy your day. Thank you so much. You can live at your own pleasure. Uh, anyone with invoices that they have paid for that uh, has not reflected, you can just drop them in the chat. Hello? Yes. Yeah, so I've, I've sent, my name is Steven, it's SDA. SDA, I've seen it. Thank yeah, you. thank you so much. I've, I've sent the two, uh, the reference numbers. Okay. I'm, I'm a bit worried because it's been like, I think, three or four weeks now. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and one of those uh, applications reads, it is awaiting for assessment. The professor of stamp duty then the second one just says awaiting verification okay. so i'm a bit worried because you know there, there's no progress there's no communication i try to call uh i just get feedback that they're following up on all these uh, applications we want to assure you shall address it accordingly i, I will highly appreciate your assistance oh, okay uh, but just just to confirm sorry yes uh, um for this application of a long-term lease yes I will get a notification on how much is supposed to be paid as term duty, right? Yes, you will. Then afterwards, how am I supposed to, should I use ITAX to pay the term duty amount or we'll have to use uh, a disaster platform? Uh, the avenue will be provided by, by then. When you will be requiring the payment, you shall mm -hmm. be able to, or they'll, through they'll, the disaster, or, you shall be able to have uh, the, the, the payment. Or, or the invoice will direct me on how, to, yes. on how the client should make the payment. Yes, through a disaster. And, is there like a backlog of applications of that nature? That's why uh, this application has stagnated for all this time or? Mm, I guess it's a case by case. So we shall just look into it. Yeah. And uh, be able to address. Yeah. Okay. Sir, sir. Sir, thanks okay. a lot. Uh, welcome.